One, two, three, four, five. It is now time for our main event of the evening. Uh, let's get ready to rumble. And... Oh, I'm so excited. And this just has all the makings of dynamite. Welcome to the Scrap and Roll MMA Podcast. Peace, peace, peace. Welcome to the Scrap and Roll Podcast. I'm your host, Sky, and this is... Hi, I'm Damien. You don't want to throw your nickname in there or anything? Oh, it's... You could, you could find me on YouTube under Mr. Man. Hey. <laughs> he said that with a lot of confidence, didn't he? Yes, sir. Yeah, so this is our new podcast. We're excited to be here. We're excited to go over all things MMA. You know, it'll mostly be... UFC, but we'll also, you know, sprinkle in some Bellator, 1FC, um, Damien loves Muay Thai, so I'm sure that we'll be talking about that a lot. You know, um, basically, this is just a place for people to come, listen, we're going to be talking a whole bunch of shit. I heard that. All (laughs) combat sports is welcome. All combat (laughs) sports, right? Um, And so, Damien, if you could just start off by just giving us a little, letting us know a little bit about you. Oh, yeah. So what's up, everybody? My name is Damien, uh, a.k.a. Mr. Man. Um, I actually got into MMA about, I want to say, like seven or eight years ago now, knowing nothing, completely nothing about it. I moved to Los Angeles and um, started watching the UFC. I think my first like main UFC fight that I watched was Conor McGregor versus Jose Aldo. Um, I caught it at a bar somewhere with my family. And ever since then, I was hooked. Right. Cause that's that's the type of power that Conor McGregor possesses. <laughs> he he'll get you hooked into into MMA for sure. And uh, yeah, ever since then I fell in love with it. Um, I started training. Uh, I signed up for a two week trial at this gym uh, in Los Angeles, California. That's where I'm at currently. Um, the gym is called A4 Fitness. Uh, it was a CrossFit training and uh, boxing gym but they held Muay Thai classes there. So I did a little Groupon for like two week free trial uh, and fell in love with it. And um, about four months in training, I actually had my first fight debut with that gym. So um, yeah, I fell in love with it. And I, I catch damn near every UFC event nowadays, <laughs> ever mm-hmm. since then, like seven years, eight years strong now. Nice. Yeah, nice. I love it. I started, uh, Competing for that gym, I had my first amateur fight there. Um, I lost that fight because I hadn't been training very long, but I put up a good fight against uh, somebody that was well versed. He was, he said he was competing for about five years, so you know I think I held my own and I did well, um, and I learned a lot. You know I learned a lot, and moving forward, it just gave me that hunger to compete more. So I. Uh, I hooked up with a, a fight organization you guys might be aware of called Street Beefs. Uh, they have a branch out here in the West Coast. Um, and I was like, I jumped all over that. Uh, and I had my first fight there. It was a Muay Thai fight, which that's what I've been training, right? Kickboxing Muay Thai. Um, I won that fight. It was my second fight ever. Uh, I won that fight with flying colors, in my opinion. Uh, damn near TKO'd the guy, but... It's funny because I'm I'm like a nice guy, right? I'm new to this. Well, I was at the time, so I took it as like more like a hard sparring session. So the guy was hurt. I could have finished him, but I kind of backed off because, you know, it wasn't that serious at the time for me. Um, but now, as I'm progressing through my career as an amateur fighter, I'm getting that, that killer mentality now where it's like finish or be finished, right? Um so yeah, I, I, I've been training, I've been sparring a lot lately. I have four fights total, I'm, I'm one in three, um, and I'm planning on improving that record for sure. I'm, right now I'm with a great gym, it's called Dynamics MMA. You guys may have heard of it. Um, it's out here in Los Angeles, in, near Santa Monica, uh, and they got some great, great fighters over there that I'm training with. Um, one being Jordan Wright, who is currently on the UFC roster. Uh, he trains classes, and uh, he also spars with us in the intermediate classes, which I'm in. And 
you know, sparring these professionals is different, like <laughs> different. You know, when you're sparring uh, other fighters who are on an amateur level, you kind of, you can hang or, you know, you can showcase some of your skills and stuff. But, man, I'm telling you, sparring against the professionals, like it's hard to even touch these guys. So, you know, all respect for them when they're going in there and competing because, man, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine competing at that high of a level, right? Right. But I'm slowly working there and working with them, I'm I'm showcasing my skills a little bit better to to the people that I train with and they're all recognizing it and giving me my props for it. So, you know, shout out to to Dynamics MMA. They've been getting me right and I'm planning on competing for them soon. Nice. And so since iron sharpens iron, have you noticed that since you've been competing and like sparring with them that you've gotten much better? Yeah, I haven't competed yet because I want to go in my first competition under that school the best version of myself and I want to I want to put on a great showcase so I could show that my gym is actually a legit gym right yeah um so I, I've been kind of taking it slow I've been there for about two months now um and yeah definitely iron sharpens iron and you know I'm in that gym getting my ass whooped every single time I go in there I'm getting my ass whooped but then when I go to my other gym where I spar some of these street beef guys you know, we all have a have a gym in Pasadena where we all collectively get together and spar each other. And I'm, you know, I'm <laughs> I'm dealing out punishment now. <laughs> it's crazy, you know, and they all see it, too. And they're like, wow, like you really gotten good. I'm like, well, I've, I've been good. I'm just getting better. Right. Because the iron sharpens iron. And it, it's crazy. I, I love seeing that progression. And it's kind of what motivates you to keep going. Right. Absolutely. And then I know like with one of the, uh, I think you had like a, a championship fight here in Vegas and didn't you have to spar one of your, um, uh, one of your teammates? Cause I, I think I see like you in clips with him now, like, like sparring. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you're talking about big daddy Williams yeah. who, who that was my second street beefs fight. It was a boxing match. It wasn't supposed okay. to be a boxing match. I, I signed up for, um, Muay Thai kickboxing, right? Cause that's what I went to school for. That's what I'm versed in. Um, but they, they had me down for an MMA match and I'm like, MMA, I didn't sign up for that, <laughs> you know? And then, so me and the dude were talking and we were like, you know, we settled on boxing because he had signed up for an MMA fight. It was going to be his MMA debut, mm -hmm. but he's a boxer. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? I'll go in there and I'll box you. And he was the champion in the street beefs, West coast, uh, division, you know, for that weight. And you know, I was like, whatever, I'll, I'll go in there and I'll fight him. <laughs> and it's funny because when they saw, when they said who I was matched up against, I was like, you got me matched up against the dude that, that has, like, the highest winning record? I was like, you know, whatever, yeah. I'll go in there and, and give it my all, which I did. You know, I didn't I didn't, I didn't get TKO'd. You know, I, I got knocked down a couple of times. Um, that's neither here nor there. But I'm, I made it to the finish line, and yeah. I'm proud of myself for that, you know, knowing, knowing the, the task that I had taken knowing that I was willing to still get in there and, and do something that I'm not real versed in, right? I'm, I'm not a, really a boxer. I'm a, I'm a kickboxer. So, you know, I did that. And it's funny because he he was the champion. He had lost his title to another guy. And um, he was supposed to fight that guy again after he fought me and beat me. And he couldn't make it to the fight. So Street Beast West Coast hit me up and were like, hey, can you fight the champion? I was like, what? It was like two weeks notice. I was like, I guess, like I'm there, you know? And I and I stepped up to the plate and I didn't put on as a, a good of a showcase as I wanted to in that fight. You know, it was last minute. I wasn't really, you know, fully prepared for that. But, you know, when the opportunity arises, you, you, you kind of hop on those things, right? Right, yeah. Well, and, you know, we always have to give respect to anybody who's willing to get inside of a squared circle, an octagon, a yeah, cage, whatever you want to call it. Like if, if you are out there training and find yourself uh, in a combat sports, like hats off to you because it takes a special oh, kind yeah. of person to be able to, you know, not only be the nail, but be the hammer and vice versa. Um, and so just a little bit about myself, I, wasn't really into MMA for a long time. I probably got into it about five years ago. Um, my brother is a huge, huge MMA fan. Uh, started off with wrestling, and then uh, he absolutely fell in love with MMA. But for me, when I first seen 
like the UFC and everything, I was like, ah, no, it's too violent. Like I was like one of those people. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then um, once I started to uh, really watch it and like work for the company, that's when I really started to fall in love with MMA. That's when like because like when you work for like a, a company, you have to you have to know what the fuck's going on. Like you can't just be sitting there and like having like casual conversations with coworkers and not know like what's actually going on. So I started watching it just so that I knew so that I could be in the, you know, the loop with everything. And then, uh, next thing you know, like I just started to love it. And, uh, the first fight, like I ever really, really fell in love with is was Max Holloway versus Jose Aldo. Number one, mm -hmm. uh, when mm -hmm. Max won the title, hence why I'm a massive, Max Holloway fan now. Right. Um, Number one fan, I would say. <laughs> hey, I'm going hard for Max Holloway. I don't care what's At going all on. times. <laughs> At all time. <laughs> win, lose, draw. I love it. You know, passionate. Yeah, you got to be that way about fighters that you love. Like, you mm -hmm. cannot be a fair weather fan. Like, those mm -hmm. are the absolute worst. Like, this is combat sports. Like, this is not basketball. It's not football. Like, you yeah. know, people are going to lose. You know, ain't no bandwagon. No, no. <laughs> like, you know, so and so uh yeah so that's how i started getting into mma and then like slowly but surely then i just started becoming like a massive fan uh going to a whole bunch of events uh meeting fighters and you know just falling in love with it all in all mm -hmm. that and that's crazy that you actually have a job with the ufc like yeah. i feel like that's a that's a dream job <laughs> it really is like, I, would, I would love to have a job with the ufc that's so amazing hey they, they're always hiring <laughs> <laughs> I might have to look into that honestly, but there always and there's so many ways to get like and then like once you're there and you get in like you know you're constantly meeting fighters because the PI and everything's right there um, mm. and the fighters are allowed to come and go to the PI. Um, That's then, so dope. Yeah, so they're at the PI. They're at the they can get free food at the cafe, so they're constantly there. Um, so you're constantly running into people and like managers and um, mm -hmm. different managers and also. Um, I'm losing the like gyms, like the head of the gyms and stuff like that. So like, yeah, so, yeah. So you know, you really get like to... Duke Rufus and them. Yeah, yeah. Like oh, especially so like here because we you. have. Mm -hmm. let, who is the the most famous fighter that you've met there? Um, like with the largest following so far. Izzy. Izzy? Oh yeah. yeah? And I met oh, Izzy cool. before he was Izzy. Like his first year in the ufc we uh we had got tickets to the mma fighting awards and he was there and at that time like tyron woodley was still the champion that's how long ago this was and mm -hmm. i was like hey let me take a picture yeah. of tyron um and i liked tyron at the time and then like yeah. uh, izzy was there and i had i think maybe i had seen him fight uh in new york that fight against uh, brunson and so like everybody was mm -hmm. like surrounded around him so i met him there met kevin gasolum um and then aside from that I don't know, you know, there's just, there's been so many people that like, now I've just kind of like gotten used to it. The bad thing is yeah. like, if I'm at work, I can't like go up to them and say, Hey, right, let me right. get a, I can't be a fan, but when I'm not yeah. at work, I'm a massive. Yeah. Oh yeah. You fan, you fan, you fan <laughs> oh, yeah. boy. Now. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's yeah. funny. Yeah. No, I mean, Izzy, that's up there. Yeah. I mean, you, you mean Izzy, I don't know how many other people you could meet that, that has more fame and popularity than Izzy. Yeah. For sure. You know, that's super dope. And he really I think was the, nice. The most famous fighter I've met was, um, uh, I'm trying to think, because I met a few. Uh, I got a picture with him, actually. I can, and now I can't think of his name for some reason. That's crazy. I know you met Jared. Yeah, Jared Cannonier for mm -hmm. sure. And he was, like, super humble, super chill. Just, yeah. Just at the event, just walking around, I'm like, no way. Yeah. <laughs> no we way. We were at that event. Weren't both of, both of us yeah, at yeah. that event? Yeah, yeah, But I didn't yeah. see Jared. I had already left, I think. Yeah, I was I was at the concession stand getting a beer, and I ran into him. I was like, wow, I got to get a photo. Yeah. yeah. What event and was that, that that we were at? That man is solid. Um, it was uh, the Nate Diaz versus... Uh, uh, Leon. Leon Edwards. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, the one inside Phoenix. Exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it was actually Izzy's fight too. Izzy yeah. fought uh, Marvin Vittori. Terrible fight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I, I had fun with that fight, especially when he grabbed his booty. I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, man. Izzy being Izzy. I right. love it. Exactly. Exactly. So, it. 
you know, speaking of fights, we're going to go ahead and just start looking at some of the cards because UFC 280 is coming up this Saturday. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, can't wait. I feel like we've been waiting forever. Can't, I've been waiting forever. Ever <laughs> since that Sean O'Malley card, that Sean O'Malley fight got announced, I was like, oh, this is the one to watch. Yeah. And that's like, that's like one of the fights that I'm looking forward to the most. And it's crazy because Sean O'Malley is number 11 fighting number one. Yeah. You know, I'm like, how did you get in this position? Like, you know, right. everybody's doubting him and, and saying like, oh, he's going to get worked. And I'm like, hey, this is MMA. Anything hey, can happen. Anything can happen. You know, you had Amanda Nunes. You mm -hmm. in, I felt like Valentina Shevchenko lost her last fight against Talia Santos. You mm -hmm. had Usman going off into the shadow Dude. realms. Yeah. <laughs> the, this sport is so crazy. That's what makes this sport so great is because you can't. You can't predict this stuff. You could have a good idea, yeah. but when you're watching it live, anything could happen. And you'd be, I feel like most of the fights, you're shocked. You're like, what? I can't believe this just happened. Yeah. And that's why I love it. It's yeah. so exciting to me. Like when I was on um, Ode Osborne's podcast, which you guys can go check that out as well. Um, we were just talking about how, like, for me, this is, like, the greatest sport. Like, it's hard for me to watch football or basketball or any other sport mm -hmm. because, there's something about, or even just boxing in general. Like, um, like this weekend, I watched uh, Clarissa Shields. I watched yeah. David Haney. I watched um, Bronze Bomber, uh, Deontay Wilder. You know, mm -hmm. I, I watched it, but at the same time, when I'm watching it, I, I'm, I want a head kick. I want an elbow. Like when they're yeah. clinching, I'm just like, ah, you know, throw something else in there. But you know, so like when I'm watching MMA, mm -hmm. like anything can absolutely happen. Like if you're watching a football game and there's four minutes left, like your team still has a, you can see the points coming mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah. but like in mma like we had no idea that usman was gonna get knocked out no idea i no was about to go to the bathroom and i nobody stopped. thought it was coming <laughs> nobody <laughs> there's no there's no getting up and going to the bathroom in mma because you're no. gonna miss <laughs> i did the same thing like i specifically remember glover Teixeira versus yuri prohaska um one now that they booked the rematch like mm. i will never forget a minute and 20 left danny and i we were out at a bar watching it and we cheers i was like up oh, that's it like that's you it. know it's Glover right. got it in the bag 28 seconds left you can't blink you can't blink with this sport that's so crazy like i have india my fiance with me all the time when i'm watching these fights and mm -hmm. she'll she'll like ask me a question or say like hey can you pass something and i'll go to pass it and i miss a, yeah. a crazy knockout in a split second like that i'm like are you serious and she's like oh i'm so sorry i'm like oh man i can't be i can't be i can't help anymore like if if this sport is on like i'm 100 percent in this you're gonna have to especially pass with the fight you're I'm invested sorry. in exactly like oh it's nuts yeah how does but, she does she watch the fights with you or? oh yeah she like she likes it she enjoys it she's been going to the fights with me she mm -hmm. actually um actually my sister nikia she actually got me my first event it was at the it was the contender series finale where actually usman fought yeah. uh, rafael dos Anjos, you know and that was when usman was on the up and up mm -hmm. and i was like you know, I I was I was rooting for Dos Anjos. I was like, get him, Dos Anjos. We didn't know and who Usman was. Exactly. I was like, I don't even know this dude. And man, did that man make a name for himself? And even though he lost his last fight, like, hey, Usman is he not to be slept on. Hey, he is not to be slept on. As far as I, I'm concerned. No, what were you saying? Oh, I was gonna say, yeah. And with this upcoming card, you know, with Islam about to fight Charles, I feel like. I feel like people are disrespecting Charles. I don't know why. Right. So let's let's get into it, right? Do we want to work? Um, now, the bottom of the card isn't really filled with a lot of, like... Um, yeah, I, I don't know a lot of the, the names at the bottom of the card. I know but... Muhammad um, Makayev. Now, I'm not good mm -hmm. at pronouncing the name, so... <laughs> we're just going to be butchering names on this podcast. Yeah. It is what it is. You know who we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we, we ain't no Bruce Buffer over Hey, here. right? <laughs> um, but... Muhammad, I've seen him fight. So if you watched any of the mm -hmm. London cards this year, he was on both of the London cards. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. I've seen and him. so I've seen him fight. Um, I've also seen Malcolm Gordon fight. Um, I'm going to lean towards Muhammad uh, on this one. Um, AJ Dobson, he's coming off a contender series. I've met him. Um, really cool dude. He lost his first fight to um, – he lost his debut fight to the dude that just fought recently, like, last weekend i think his name's like mccoon or McCone, something like that he's from australia mm. um 
I mean, going up against a, another wrestler, it's going to be tough. Not looking good. A wrestler. <laughs> you like know. That, right? and, and then when we just talking about like this right here, I'm not even going to try. I'm not <laughs> even going to try. Um, but so Uzmir and Nikita Krylov, mm -hmm. I'm excited to see this. Um, I was just watching uh, Nikita Krylov was also on the last London card, and he knocked out. Oh, like that. He fighting back to back. Mm-hmm. So I wish that it would show automatically uh, who he fought, but he actually beat somebody that was like, it was pretty impressive. It's not yeah, I mean, Vul Vulcan's up there. I mean, that man, if he gets yeah, to him. Yeah, Gustafson. Like Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, he oh, I remember that Gustafson in London, yep. yeah. I remember that. I remember that. It was nasty. Man. And I miss that, Gustafson. That's why I, lo that's why I love this sport, because, you know, as, as time goes on, the old school, you know, killers, they can't keep up. The new school is learning everything. They're so well-versed, you yeah. know? And if they're not if they're not well versed, then they they have a specialty, and that specialty is like upper echelon. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's yeah. one or the other. Either you're well versed all around, like Bilal Muhammad. Like I feel like he's he's a well rounded fighter, hey. but he, but he likes to wrestle, and he'll he'll lay on you, and you you <laughs> you you'll feel like he's not doing anything, but then you look up at the clock. It's the third round. There's three minutes left, and you losing. Facts, facts. I'm actually really really excited for this card. Um... You would expect it to be on the, the main card, but they put it at the top of the prelims. Um, at mm -hmm, the UFC exactly. X experience, like even though people talk shit about Muhammad all the time, they're always like, remember the decision, because you know his nickname's remember the name. Like yeah. people love Muhammad. They love him at these events. Like I've seen him mm -hmm. at several different events. Like when I go to like different events and um like people are like lined up to take pictures with them, like and they talking shit and he's talking shit back. Like <laughs> Yeah. If you That's run up on too, him. That you, that you that you said that because like from what I see online, like comment sections and stuff, everybody's shooting on Muhammad. I'm like, why? Why they hating on this man like that? Cause he been he been winning and like a win is a win. I don't care how you get it done in MMA. Sometimes you can't take those dangerous risks of striking with a striker, you know. What was Sometimes he gonna do gonna against? To... Uh, um, you know, what was he gonna do against Wonder Boy? Mm -hmm. Strike with him? No. No. Ain't nobody gonna try to strike with him. Nobody. And, and that's <laughs> one thing that like cracks me up is that like you know, fast forward, you know, we have um, Kevin Holland getting ready to face Wonder Boy, and you know he's like, oh, I want to strike with them, blah blah blah, and I'm just thinking to myself like, you better start eating nuts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you better do what you gotta do because it's really hey, hard to strike. That's he's an elite striker. Hey, he's tricky. He's yeah. tricky. He's quick. Like you know that that's one of the old school like fighters that I I really enjoy watching mm -hmm. still to this day. Because you, hey, he'll he'll turn your lights out. I don't care if you're up and comer or undefeated. You going up against him, you better be on your A game. One hundred percent. A hundred percent. So I'm really excited about the Bilal and uh, Sean Brady fight. I kind of feel bad for Muhammad because, like, you know, he's on this fight streak. Um, I think he's ranked. Mm -hmm. They don't have his rank right here, but I think he's ranked, like, number four or something like that. Mm -hmm. And now he has he's to go under. and fight this killer. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. That's how, that's how it is. It's like they either feed you to the wolves or, you know, they you getting fed. And if you lose, you're going to lose that spot because, yeah. you know, it, it, it's like a, this is like a, a lose, lose situation. It like, really it, is. all right. If he beats this guy, like, yeah, sure. Like it, it, it looks good on your resume, but you're not really jumping up in the rankings much, right. you know, as if you were, you were up there fighting, you know, uh, uh, a Kobe Covington. Now you right. beat Kobe Covington. Now, now people talking about you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. Um, and I just think it's going to be a hard fight for Muhammad. Like they're both wrestlers, but I feel like Sean Brady's striking is is uh, is better. Um, Superior. Yeah. And it's just going to be a tough fight for me if he gets it done. Hey, we got a problem. I, I mean, I feel like I feel like Muhammad might. I feel like his striking hasn't been improving, and I and it might be because people are kind of aware that he's going to try to take you down. Mm -hmm. You know that that's the wrestler's advantage, right? Just like how when Khabib knocked down Connor, because Connor was so afraid that he was going to shoot for his legs, he's 
he's falling for those feints right. and then got caught with the overhand. So, you know, you got to be careful with these with these wrestlers. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and then moving up, um, let's just get into it. How do you feel about Benir Darius? I, hey, I like this guy. He's been he's been on a win streak, it, and it's weird because I feel like he just came out out the woodwork, right? I mean, he's been fighting for a long time, but now all of a sudden, people are starting to mention his name and stuff. And I'm like, okay, like I see you. You've been you've been grinding on your on your way up, and yeah. he really has. Yeah, like he especially really after has. that uh, that Tony fight, like that's when um, I had seen him fight. scratch that never mind um so I, i'm iffy about benil like and I, and I really think that it is because like we don't know enough about him like mm-hmm. like you don't know nothing about him like i i am he hasn't not, been in the line like yeah like i don't need somebody to be like showboating and you know to be talking right. about shit or anything like that but i do want to know your story like i want something right. to root mm-hmm. for i want like when i say somebody's name like, I want to be like, oh, yeah, I heard this about them or something. Like, I want, I just need to be able to know more. I need to be able to connect with the fighter because, like, oh, you yeah. can be a good fighter. But, like, if, like, there's no type of connection, then, you know, it's just yeah, not really yeah. working for me. And then looking at Matisse Gamrot, um, I felt like he, I felt like he fought Sarukian a couple of months mm-hmm. back. Um, and I felt like he lost. I felt like Sarukian won that fight. So, I mean, good on Gamrot to get the opportunity to be able to now step in. And have this yeah. big fight because um, I think uh, Dana confirmed today or maybe yesterday that Alex Volkanovsky is up next for the 155. So even with Benil or Gamrot winning this fight, they're still going to have to wait, you know, because they have the uh, Perth card, Perth Australia mm-hmm. card taking place in February. I think it's either February, March of next year. And then they have the um, Brazil card taking place in january of next year so they're gonna have to wait like depending on who wins the 155 um which kind of sucks for them but i'm excited to see this match i'm gonna gonna lean towards benil um i'm gonna lean towards him too i feel like he's i feel like he's got i mean looking at the record you know gamma might might be the guy Mm -hmm. but i feel like benil has a lot of ufc experience yeah and he knows what to do to win. You yeah. know, sometimes, you know, you don't got to be flashy and stuff. We love that. We love to see it. We love to hear you in the news. We love to hear you talk shit. You know, this guy being quiet in the corner. It doesn't really say much. You know, super humble guy. But psh, from what I've been watching, like, this dude this dude knows how to win. Right. And he's, he's been on the up and up. So, you know, this might, this actually might be a rough one for Gamera. Yeah. Yeah. So that's interesting. And then. The surprise fight that we've all been fucking waiting for. Hey, uh, this Peter is the Yon one right here. And Sean O'Malley. Who are you going this with? This is the one. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm. Psh, it's so crazy because with this sport, you know, I think with both my head and my heart, right? Mm-hmm. My heart wants Sean O'Malley to win because of the opportunity that was presented. And he stepped up to the plate and he's like, you know what? I'll fight Peter Yon right now, number one. And this guy's what? Ranked what? Number 11? Mm hmm. That's nuts. And we all know what Piotr Jan is, is capable of, yeah. you know? You know, man, <laughs> I think I think Jan is going to win. I think he's going to win. You know, everybody's expecting that food to win, honestly. And I think he will. But Sean O'Malley is not a man to take lightly. That, that number 11, yeah, it's on there. But I feel like he's a top 10 contender, 100%. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel, um, I feel the same. Like, my heart is going for Sean. I've met Sean, um, mm-hmm. like out, and he was just like, it was like before he was like super, super big, and he was just like yeah. at a bar before one of the fights started, and we went there, and he was sitting there. This was when um, the schmo was like hadn't like really become the schmo yet, like okay, um, and uh, and they had um, an event that they had put together, so that was really cool. Um, got to sit there, talk to him, take pictures, and. He was super cool, um, so I really became a fan after that. But like, I just want him to get it done because don't we all love to see like the underdog? Like we're always rooting for yeah, the underdog. Always, I'm always going for the underdog. You yeah. know, you know, especially like, a big one like this. Yeah, 
and I know like you and I don't agree about Peter Yan's last fight with Aljo, right? Like you mm-hmm. felt like Peter mm-hmm. Yan won, and I felt like Aljo got it done. I feel like I feel like Peter Yan won. Yep. Yeah. So with that, my main concern for Yan is it's a three round fight. He starts slow. He's gonna have to mm-hmm. come out the gates, and and O'Malley's got power. You know that's facts. Uh, Piotr does like to take notes. He like to take those mental notes and then adjust. And you know, round three, four, five is when he starts to come alive and he starts reading you. And Sean O'Malley like comes out. You know, he comes to play. So yeah, if 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 Jan starts off slow, cause this what a three rounder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But still, I mean, I I feel like Jan's not gonna play around this fight. I feel like he's gonna have almost no respect for Sean O'Malley. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I feel. I feel like he's going to come out guns blazing with no respect for his stand-up at all. Gotcha. And, you know, Sean O'Malley's a tall, long guy. And, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, the more lengthy, lanky you are, it's kind of hard to get on the inside. But, you know, him training at, at Tiger Muay Thai, I feel like he's going to know what to do. And he's going to get in there. And, and I think Sean O'Malley's going to get hurt. I think we're going to see Sean O'Malley get hurt. Now, if he could, now, if he could take that adversity and... and, and you know, keep moving forward and still strike with him. Like, I feel like this is a win-win for Sean O'Malley, no matter what happens. For sure. Unless he gets, like, starched out there. If he gets starched, like, in the first round or something, you know. But, you know, if he makes it to the end and loses a decision, you know, I feel like it's a win-win for him. Yeah, yeah. I I feel like, just like you said, I think Jan's going to come out more aggressive because he knows that, like, it's three rounds. You can't can't take a round Mm -hmm. off. You know, nah. uh, especially with judging, like you never know what judging is. These come UFC out. judges have been wild lately. <laughs> Why, yo? Like just as almost as bad as boxing. So like for mm-hmm. me, like, but my thing is, is like if he comes out and he tastes some of Sean's power, we we're gonna see if Jan has a chin because I like. Yeah. O'Malley hits hard, and like the main thing that I always like think about when I think about Jan is just like that fight against him against Corey Sanhagen. That was terrifying because Corey looked great the first two rounds. I was like, mm-hmm. okay, Corey, we see you. Yeah. And then Jan starts walking him down like the Terminator and picked him apart. It That's was ridiculous. Saying. And so without those extra two rounds, I'm excited to see um, this fight. It's a huge step up for Sean O'Malley. And, you know, huge. we're going to see what he's made huge. of. We're going to see we if really he is are. who he says he is. Hey, but you know... Sean O'Malley does have power, but that that Chris guy that he fought, the newcomer, <laughs> I mean, he was eating them shots and still walking them yeah, down. And I was looking at chin. man, I was like, talk about Terminator. That man was a Terminator. He was taking them shots and still walking them down. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, he man was leaking from everywhere, eating hard shots and still was walking them down. Sean O'Malley on the back foot, kind of looking tired. Yeah, like <laughs> how many times he broke his like, hand? Like I I know Sean's knuckles hurting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we're going to see. And and he's from AZ. I'm from AZ. So, you know, I feel like Piotr Young's going to win, but I'm, I'm going to be rooting for Sean. 100%. Yeah, so our hearts are with O'Malley, but we think Young might take it home. Then we get to the yeah, championship fight. My brain says Young should definitely win that fight. Yeah. Uh, Al Jermaine versus TJ Dillashaw. Mm. How you mm, feeling? Mm, mm. <laughs> I feel like Dillashaw going to take this one. <laughs> I feel like Dillashaw is going to take this one. Dillashaw is a killer, you know, and, you know, through all the controversy and stuff, you know, I, I've i seen Dillashaw in some adversity and come back, you know, so. And Dillashaw got some great grappling. Like, yeah. don't get it twisted. Like, he got some great grappling. So, I, I, for Al I feel like it's going to be a long night, honestly. And I was feeling that way about Yon, about him fighting Yon again, but. You know, we see what happened. I mean, I got to give to Aljamain. He he actually, you know, studied and, and, and had a different game plan and a different approach and got it done. So with TJ, though, ooh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I say TJ should win this fight, like, 10 toes down. He should win this fight. Yeah. it it. I'm really interested in this fight. Like, this fight is going to tell us a lot about Aljamain Sterling, in my opinion, right? Because mm-hmm. we know who TJ Dillashaw is. Like, regardless of the PD usage and all that stuff, like, we EPO, know, who, yeah. like, 
he's etched and sketched in our brains. Like we we've seen him dismantle Cody Garbrandt, mm-hmm. Dominic Cruz, like, and that was Cruz when he was still looking good. So we know who TJ mm-hmm. is. Like Aljamain, we unfortunately because of the first Yan fight, like forgot. You know what I mean? Like yeah. even though his last fight, you know, I felt like you know he won. Um, we still haven't given him the respect, right? Everybody's right, still right. just kind of like, mm, okay, but can you do it against this guy? Can you do it against this yeah. guy? If he goes yeah. and gets it done against TJ, TJ oh, yeah, there's won't no be doubt. Able to say anything. Nah, yeah, definitely no doubt in Al Jermaine's <laughs> talent if he goes and gets gets it done against TJ Dillashaw. But, you know, that you know, it's always in the back of my mind every time I see Al Jermaine up for a fight is that Marlon Moraes fight. I'm like, hey, that knee to the head. <laughs> that head kick? Yeah. Man. That was scary, you know, yeah. and I was like, yo, is he going to be able to, you know, all, all credit to Aljamain. He came back from there like it didn't even happen, right? you know, and it's like, I feel like TJ Dillashaw got those kicks in his arsenal too, you know, he's super well-rounded. Mm-hmm. That's why I like, that's why I like TJ. I, li- I, I like him as a fighter. I respect his skill set, you know, but I kind of lost respect for him once he, he got popped for what he did, you know, it was like, really like right. in this sport. Any type of advantage, like you can really hurt somebody. Yeah. Honestly. Like imagine Al Jermaine wrestling TJ and he gets exhausted and TJ full stamina still. Max yeah. stamina. Yeah. <laughs> you in danger. <laughs> exactly. You in danger. And people, you know, some people be like, Oh, well, it wasn't steroids. It's like, well, it don't have to be steroids. There's a reason why he took what he did, because yeah. you know, Cardio is number one in a fight. If you Facts. can't, if you're tired and gassed out and you can't put your hands up to defend yourself anymore, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. You're done for. Like, yeah. you could literally take some super damage and, and won't be able to compete again, maybe ever. Right. You know? Facts. All because you got gassed out and couldn't hold your hands up anymore. Like, these are killers in here. Yeah. So, you know, I, I kind of lost respect for TJ. On that end to him, but I still recognize his skill. Yeah, that man, that man is talented. Yeah. You know, yeah. he's talented. And uh, did you see his his latest photo? Yeah, my man is shredded. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. This man ready for war. And I'm sure he's know? being tested nonstop right now. Oh yeah, oh yeah, he's getting super right tested. now. And I, and I think he can't even complain about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited to see uh how he looks in this fight just because like in that um in his last fight with Sanhagen, uh which you and I we didn't agree on that either about who won that fight. Um Hey, he was taking some shots. Yeah, but you know like he he had that he completely blew out his knee in that first mm-hmm. round. So like the following the rounds first. like I feel like if he wouldn't have blown out his knee in the first round, like we would have actually seen a, a much c- more clear fight as to who mm-hmm. won that fight um, against yeah, Sam yeah. Hagen. So now seeing him completely healed, um, it's going to be really interesting just to see like how he um, how he handles it, like what he looks like against Alderman. You know, they're both talking about their wrestling D one versus D three and all of that. Like, you know, we're mm-hmm. going to see. I have not been impressed lately with Alderman Sterling's wrestling at all. Um, you know, hey, it is what it, it is. You like... know, but hey, it's a an- it's another fight. It's a different opponent, and mm-hmm. we're going to see something different. Um, so I, I definitely, like I said, you know, I think we're going to see what Alderman is made of. Um, cause we already know who TJ is and if TJ gets it done, you know, there's some nice fights that are set up, um, for him to oh, take yeah. on, you know what I mean? Um, oh yeah. I would love to see him versus John. Yeah. Yeah. And for that's sure. what, uh, Dana came out earlier and said that, um, this is the number one contender fight. So Jan versus Sterling. So can you imagine Sean O'Malley versus TJ like that footwork? Okay. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, that would be a banger, I feel like. That's what I'm saying. So I'm excited there's, about that. I mean, there's that. some killers in that division. So, like, a lot of fights. Five is fun. stacked. There'd be so, a lot of fun fights in that in that division, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. That's, what, that's another reason why I really like 135 right now because, like, there's so many people that haven't fought mm-hmm. for the title who are, who have the opportunity to, and there's killers in there, and they fast, and yeah, they're vicious. Good. Like, there's really nobody, like, at 135. I'm now on team, too. So, you know, they, they pushing the pace the whole yeah, time exactly. exactly that's why i like the you know and they were trying to get rid of some of these smaller divisions i'm like mm-hmm. nah i love these divisions because yeah. they pedal to the metal the whole five rounds yeah. it's like damn these dudes don't get tired Mm-mm. and then we have the fight we've been waiting for 
the fight we have been waiting for. Please let everybody make weight. Let nobody get sick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, just make it to hey, the Volkanovsky's fight. Hey, Volkanovski's supposed to step in, right? If something were to happen. Yeah, but we don't want that. Like, he can wait. Nah, yeah, this is the one. He can wait. Because we still gonna, are going to want to see this fight. We're still going to have that what if. You know what I mean? Charles yeah. Oliveira versus Islam Makachev. Ah. <sighs> My now, heart, my heart is with Charles. I I love Charles Oliveira and the amount of adversity he done faced, like these past few fights, like he always got it done somehow. Like you know, finishing people in a I, glorious fashion, you know. And I'm like, okay, this man, he's a changed man from when we we first was seeing him, you know. Right. And that's what I love about this sport too is you get to you get to see these fighters evolve and become a better version of themselves. Right. Which, you know, if you're in the UFC fighting, you're already a, a certified killer. You know, even if you're losing, like, nah, you you were fighting the best of the best, Playboy. Like right. you you up there. So to see him where he's at now versus the people that he had to go through to, to make it to where he is, mm -hmm. like I got nothing but respect for this man. Yeah. Now Islam, I feel like People are are saying he's a little Khabib, right? Right. That's the comparison. Mm -hmm. He's a. I mean, even though they're they're in the same weight class, like he's like a, a smaller build of Khabib, and people are expecting him to just wrestle Charles and and just do whatever he wants to do. Bronx and kind of they're kind of downplaying his ground game, which right. I don't understand because I feel like Dubons will throw something up all of a sudden. You tapping out. That's what makes it And you so thought you exciting. was in the advantage position, right? Right. You're like, okay, I'm going to take this man down. <laughs> Listen, I would be the first person to say, I did not believe in Charles Oliveira. I didn't even want him to fight for the belt. Like, I'm just being honest. Like, I specifically nah, yeah. was talking to my brother, and I was like, okay, he beat Tony. I was like, I just what didn't. I was like, okay, you want to fight? You want to? I think at that time he was on like a eight or nine fight win streak, and I was just like, uh -huh. but there was other fights that I wanted to see happen, and I was just like, who cares? I did not care about Charles Oliveira. I was wrong. I was wrong. Walked through Tony, turned around. That gate, that Chandler fight. Oh, the Chandler fight. I thought it was over. I'm over here cheering for i thought it was over comes back knocks chandler out all right y'all so all crazy. said that dustin poirier was the guy to beat then he goes through does what he does to dustin poirier and then you're like hey he can't get past gaethje's um he can't get past gaethje's power gets knocked by gaethje then there was the one to sit gaethje on his ass and choke him out yeah. It was nuts. That's why I love this sport. This man right here is a is a fucking clear cut reason why I love this sport because anything could happen. You didn't see this man fall on his ass. You like, oh, this man might be done. Yeah. You know, and and even the other fighters, you see it in their eyes. Their eyes. Yeah, yeah, their eyes. See how their thick eyes. His glasses are. <laughs> that was wild. But like when people knock them down, their eyes light up. Like, oh, this is my chance, and like, nah, this ain't your chance. Come on, it, it, it's almost it's almost like it awakens Oliveira to like, you know, oh shit, all right, yeah, this is a real fight. Yeah, and then goes and like completely turns the fight on its ass. Yeah, where you was like, you know, people that are watching from the outside are like, oh, that guy's gonna win. The mm -hmm. other guy, you know. Especially if they see them get knocked down or taking the shots that he was taking, and then he comes around and then lays you on your ass, like, hey, this, hey, he got that dog in him. Yeah. I, I, I feel like he's like a T.J. Dillashaw where he got that dog in him. Mm -hmm. Like, you are gonna try to win any means necessary. Like, right. you are gonna have to kill this man in there. Yeah, and, I don't believe it. The know, champion has a name. I, I respect Islam. Like, he, he's been putting in work. He's been doing what he's doing, but like. You know, I'm not I'm not an MMA like casual where I'm gonna say like lay and pray type fighting isn't isn't exciting. I mean, it's not really that exciting, but in my head, you got to do what you got to do to win, right? Right. And it and I feel like that's what Islam is gonna do. He's not gonna try to strike with Oliveira. Oliveira's, I don't know what's going on, but his striking is crispy lately. Crisp. Crispy. This man is on his p's and q's, man. Hasn't and I'm like, not okay. one practice. Okay, like I see you, dude. You've yeah. been you've been putting that work in, so I got nothing but respect for Oliveira. And I, 
I think he's going to win this fight. It's not even like I hope he wins. I, I think he's going to win, and I think it's going to shock the world because people really putting Islam on that pedestal. And don't get me wrong, he should be up there. Like, he's been training with some killers. He's in the, you know what I mean? Like, you got you got Khabib coaching you, and you looking like little Khabib already? Like, oh, yeah, you should be in there, like, putting in work. But everybody everybody finds that kryptonite sooner or later, and I feel like Oliveira is, is that kryptonite. And I feel like he's going to shock people. And this is one of the fights I'm excited for, too. I can't wait. I absolutely cannot wait. And, like, this is another one of those, we don't really know Islam. Like, he, right. he hasn't really fought anybody in the top ten. You know what I mean? That's so what we, I've been saying. We haven't got to get behind him like that. We, ha we haven't seen that dog. We haven't seen that, you know? Like, I posted a clip a couple of days ago of, like, his one loss, which was a knockout. Um, but that was really early on in his career. But it's mm -hmm. like... We haven't seen you go up against nobody in the top ten to be like, oh, okay, yeah, you're yeah. the guy. Yeah, who, who did you fight last? Who, who was it? Like Bobby Sam, Green Sam? had to step in. Oh, yeah, because oh, he right. was supposed to fight. Oh man, I can't remember who he was supposed to fight, that's but right. it was somebody in the top ten, and they ended up getting hurt. So then Bobby Green stepped in. Um, yeah, shout out to Bobby Green. Um, and hey, I respect Bobby Green. I I actually met him at one of my Street Beast fights. He was he was out there in the crowd watching me fight and he gave me props after my fight. Like he kinda gave me that 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 inspiration to like go in there and get it nice. done, you know. It was my Muay Thai fight that I wanted. And he told me afterwards too, he was like, Hey, he was like, Great fight in there. He was like, Next time you need to you need to go for the kill. And I was mm -hmm. like, Yeah, you right, you right. Was that the fight? It was one of... Sorry, was go that ahead. the fight where like you had stopped and asked the guy if he was okay? Yeah, yeah, it was that fight. Yeah, because I'm used to, like, sparring and stuff, and obviously, like, I'm not trying to... And it's a fight. Like, it, it, it... Going into, like, that experience, it gets you to turn that that switch, right? Mm -hmm. That kill mode. People talk about it all the time, where it's like you got to have that switch, and you could be a super nice guy outside of the ring, but when you're in the ring, it's, it's kill or be killed. Yeah. And I'm starting to realize that now, you know? I'm 31. That's the whole reason I got into this, to this uh, you know, combat sports, is because I'm getting up there in age. I wanted I wanted to test myself because it's something that I'm really passionate about, mm -hmm. and I don't want to run out of time and then look back on my life and think like, oh, I shoulda, coulda, blah blah blah. It's like, nah, I got this time now. I'm gonna go and do it. And people, you know, people talk about me all the time, talking about, oh, you you're a little too old to be doing this. Like, oh, you're 31. Like these people have been training since they were like nine, you know. And it's like, okay, that's cool, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go and try. You know what I Can't mean? Be like. Worried about anybody in this sport, anything is possible. Like I don't care if you've been training since you're nine. I could, I, I guarantee you, there's somebody in the world who started training two, three years ago who will probably sleep you. <laughs> you know, because yeah. it's a thinking man's game, and you know, IQ is a real thing. Yeah. I, and in this sport, like IQ will will win you fights over athleticism. Absolutely. Who do you think has the the best fight IQ in the UFC? In the UFC. Oh man, I think I think Izzy, I think Izzy, and people Izzy hating on him because, because people, I mean Alex, I mean he's a he's a dog in there. <laughs> that man, that man, that man going in there trying to hurt people. So, but Izzy, like he's been getting a lot of hate because he's been like real passive, like mm -hmm. you know sticking and moving, and people want to see more action from him and stuff. It's like nah, bro, like he at the top of the food chain, and people trying to hurt this man. And he's going to try to secure that goal, you know? And I respect that. He he goes in there with the game plan and he sticks to it. He yeah. sticks to it. What, like, regardless of the criticism that he's going to receive in, after the fights, you know? Yeah, but I tell you what. This next fight, you'll see 281 against Alex Pieta. Mm. Ain't going to be none mm. of that. Because Alex, hey. Alex is coming. Alex isn't going to be like... Alex ain't going to be like the other opponents who kind of just, like, is in there coasting and playing around with him, like... Nah, yeah. Alex is coming and Izzy is coming and That's a big scary guy. <laughs> that's that's the scariest man I don't think Izzy done face. And it's not because of the past, you know, whatever yeah. happened back then. I feel like this man, when you face to face with him, it's kinda like intimidating. Yeah. Like there's a game, uh, Fight Night Championship where there's this dude Andre Bishop, that's like the, the, the protagonist, that's who you're playing as. And then the guy that you're supposed to fight, his name is uh Isaac Frost. Kind of reminds me of, of of that fool, Alex Pierre, because he a big, big dude looking down at you almost. And it's like, <laughs> bruh, he's like the boss. You know what yeah. I mean? Like the boss level where it's like, 
this is the final guy you have to fight in order to win <laughs> and yeah. be like solidified. Like it's, I can't wait for that fight. Oh man, I'm gonna be on the edge of my seat, like biting my nails, like oh. <laughs> I know, I, know. I, I absolutely cannot wait. Like it's finally the challenge that we've been wanting to see from Izzy. Um, and if Izzy can get it done, like there's nobody else there that that is. There's nobody. There's nobody except for him. It's gonna be Robert Whitaker again. Yeah, you know, because Robert... I want to see Robert Whitaker versus him, honestly, versus uh, Piera. I feel like Piera should have fought Whitaker first. You know, it's a bad fight but, for Whitaker. But it, but they got that history, so I understand like the decision making mm-hmm. that they went with there because he beat Sean, Sean Strickland, and it's like. Okay, you beat Sean Strickland, like that's cool. But let me see you against a Robert Whitaker before you take the championship. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because that's a fight that I would love to see, and I feel like, hey, Rob, he's a gatekeeper right now, but mm-hmm. it's, hey, it's for good reason, right? He he can't beat Izzy, like he can't beat the best of the best, but he is one of the best of yeah, the best. Yeah. If Izzy wasn't there, oh, he's still one eighty five champ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. So, can't wait for that, but. Yeah, so we rocking with Charles. We rocking with Charles. Charles. I'm rocking with Charles 100%. He going to get it done somehow, some way. He going to find himself on the opposite end of a W. Let's go, go, Charles. That's me thinking with my heart and my head. Yeah. Yeah. I I think think Charles has more ways to win. Like, just to sum it up, Charles has more ways Mm -hmm. to win. Yes, Um, absolutely. But one thing that, like, me and my brother were talking about is that, like, whoever wins, whether it's Charles or Islam, they are going to be a problem. They're going to be a problem because if For Islam sure. wins, who's going to come in and like if he wins and dominates Charles, who's going to stop him? Nobody. 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 If Charles wins, he's already beat the top like the top five. Um, who's going to stop him? Nobody. It's gonna it's gonna be a rematch, I bet, because Islam is gonna hang out at the top. I feel like if he doesn't beat Charles, he's gonna be number one. Yeah. You know, he's going to be the contender that people, he's going to be the Robert Whitaker of the division. <laughs> he's going to be the gatekeeper. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Um, I'm absolutely excited for UFC 280. It is an early start time, so it'll be starting. It is? Yeah. So oh, yeah, yeah. It starts at 11 a.m. Pacific time. That's crazy. Yeah. I didn't even realize that because yeah. it is in Abu Dhabi. Mm-hmm. And but if it was like they've been catering to the U.S. audience a lot of the times with the with the fight events, like with the pay per views, like yeah. you know specifically. Yeah. So but, uh, yeah, I'm surprised that this one is actually starting pretty early. Yeah, for Abu Dhabi, they try to keep it um, the same. So the main, the prelims, I think, starting at 7 a.m. Yeah, 7 a.m. Damn. Yeah. That's all right. I feel for the U.K. audience because they always like. 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Exactly. If they want to catch the fight, <laughs> they exactly. kind of they gonna have to take a take a early sleep. Exactly. So, it, it, <laughs> um, you know, I'm I'm gonna be up. I'm gonna be up. I'm gonna be watching. Yeah, I'm gonna be up. Um, I mean, thanks for the heads up. Yeah, I would have been upset. Absolutely. Um, so I'm just <laughs> excited to see like what's gonna take place with these. Like, we still have the press conference this week media days uh-huh. tomorrow um there's yes. gonna be a lot of talking and a lot of just bullshit going on so i'm excited to see what happens um i'm here for it all so with the last that's five or so yeah let's go so that's ufc 280 um ufc 280 we've been waiting for this day yeah we've been waiting for this day we're gonna find out a lot about everybody that's on this card um we will be back next week. We'll go over what happened on UFC 280. Um, we'll take a look and see if there's anything on the next fight card. I, I, is there a break in between? Um, I'm fights? not even sure. Let's see. This has been the, the one that I've been counting. Oh, Cater versus Ooh. Arnold Ooh. Allen. Let's go. Hey, that one's going to be a banger. Who's on the Who's on the undercard for that? So they got Tim Means versus Griffin. Man. Let's go. Okay. Oh, Treshawn okay. Gore. He needs this win. Treshawn, um, I, I know you uh didn't see um what's it called? I can't even think of the name of the show. <laughs> tough. Oh, the Contender yeah, Series. He was on oh. Tough. Um on the Volkanovsky um season. Uh but he needs to get a win. Oh, that's why Khalil's been walking around. Okay, I, I seen Khalil the other day. That boy big. 
That's a big boy. Hey, I could already tell through the TV. I can tell he big. Yeah. Hey, and I respect. I love watching Roundtree fight because he has that traditional Muay Thai stance mm -hmm. where he's coming out bouncing on the. Yeah. ready for anything and everything and yeah. i love it he kind of reminds me of a valentina shevchenko the way he's like in his stance waiting ready for you and that side and I, kick I, I that he it. threw and tore that guy's knee out I, i'm a oh, fan man. when i seen that i said i love him that's killer instinct right there that's he a that's a under, that's a underutilized technique i feel like because mm -hmm. it could really do some damage and you saw robert whitaker do it yeah you know, and the dude, he didn't even know. Mm -hmm. You know, he was like, yeah, it landed, but I didn't know it did, like, any significant damage. Right. And the dude was like, yeah, he's like, I blew out my... <laughs> I was like, oh, man, that's a that's a technique people got to start adding into the utility belt, honestly. And a lot of people like to say, like, oh, um, it." a lot of people want it to be banned. And I'm like, hey. I know. Yeah. Learn Who how said that? Uh, uh, it was Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy is the one that started bringing that up. Yeah. I'm like, N because I think Robert Whittaker did it to him mm -hmm. or something. And yeah. it was like, uh, no, nah, how about you just don't get hit by it, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> but, the, but like when Khalil Roundtree threw that kick, I just remember thinking to myself, like, he threw that to cause damage. Like, you see other mm -hmm. fighters throw it and they kind of just like throw it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, this yeah. is like a little... He threw that like a range check. Yeah, or something. exactly. Yeah. He threw that to finish the fight, and he did. Um, that was absolutely absolutely amazing. And then Justin Jacoby, do you know him? Because I know you watch kickboxing. Oh and yeah, stuff. I know yeah. Jacoby. Yeah. yeah, he was talking about Alex Pereira's uh, power, like on um, Ariel Hawani show. He was talking about how powerful because um, he got knocked out by Alex Pereira, and he was talking oh, about. Oh, did he? I didn't even know. Yeah, that. and kickboxing, and he was talking about. That was the hardest hit he ever had in his whole entire life. So I mean, I can imagine that that's a big boy. Yeah. Alex Pereira is a scary, intimidating <laughs> guy. <laughs> I'm not even going to cap. And I haven't even seen this man in person, but I can imagine in person it's 10 times worse. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your heart rate is up immediately looking eye to eye to him. Absolutely. Knowing he's going to try to fight you. Yeah, I don't know why Sean <laughs> Strickland tried to stand with that man. Oh, Chase Hooper's fighting? Yeah. I love Chase Hooper. Yeah, so Chase is going to be fighting next weekend. Um, Joseph Holm, he's also... You got to start watching the Contender Series. I, I do. I got to catch up oh on that because God. I've been missing out a lot of... I've been missing on a lot of people. Yeah. I thought our, I thought Arlovsky um, actually... His contract ended recently, I thought. Man. Or was that somebody else? Do they got the age up here? Because I think he like 45. Bro, that man been fighting for the UFC forever. <laughs> they don't have his age right here, but I think Andre is like 45 or something. Um, that man been fighting forever, and he still looks good, too. I'm like, okay, man, like, I see you. He does. I see you. He takes, he takes a little bit of damage, but he also dishes it, and he's still a dog in there, always trying to make it to the end, and I see it, and I'm like, okay, I respect this, man. Yeah, and one thing I will say, like, I always see people, like, when they look at a card like this, and they're like, um... Like, oh, this card is weak, or I'm not going to watch. It's going to be stupid. These are the cards to watch. The cards where you don't have a whole bunch of names that you know on there, those people are going out there for the 50 Gs, baby. Like, yeah. these are the cards to watch. Like, they're yeah, nothing but to bangers. Um, yeah, they're not They're not timid. They're not afraid to to try to showcase some shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're in there to, to win, put on a showcase, and make a name for themselves. Facts. 100%. Facts. And then and having... Like, Calvin Cater and Arnold Allen, we know what we're gonna get. Oh, we're gonna for get sure. Violence. And I think, I think Arnold Allen is gonna take that. Honestly, Ooh. I respect, I respect Cater. That man has a chin. You want to talk about chins? That man has a chin. Yeah. This man has a gas tank and a chin. Yeah. And the way he's been throwing them elbows, oh, you not want to catch a, a a Cater elbow. But Arnold Allen, I don't know what it is about him. You know, where I've been he got watching the elbows from. Who Cater? Yeah. Who he get those from? He ate so many from Max. <laughs> he ate so oh, many. Yeah. No, go back and Bruh. watch it. Watch Max Bruh. in the third. Wow, I remember that from nasty it. elbows. And then when he, he fought it. Giga, when he fought Giga, he, they're almost identical. I was like, oh, you've been paying attention, Calvin. I mean, that was a nasty. Hey, fight Giga too. was that Giga was that man that was supposed to come like be on the up and up, and <laughs> Cater shut that down. He was like, nah. He's like after after the Max Holloway, like I gotta put on a show. I gotta put a, he, he, didn't, he didn't fight for a whole year to the date. So they had mm -hmm. that fight January fifteenth, January sixteenth. He fought the following year against Giga, and that was nasty. That was hey, nasty. And Giga was out there trying to hurt that man. He was trying to kill him early on, mm -hmm. and it. That's why I'm saying Cater has a chin because he took the hardest shots you could take and was still walking forward and throwing heat. Ooh. Yeah. 
So man, I I love this sport. These man, these lighter weight divisions are the ones to watch. Yeah. Like, and people been hating on them. I'm like, nah, these are the ones. Like, people try to say like. Oh, these guys are so little. Like you know, they weigh so little, and it's like, yeah, it's it's for good reason. Yeah. Most of these guys probably walk around like 180, 190. Mm -hmm. You know, they cut in the weight to get down, like yeah. you know. And because Alto walks around that. at like like 170. And that's absolutely crazy to me because he a little guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like height wise, like he a little guy. To yeah. know that Volkanovski is over 200 pounds, that's crazy. Yeah. That's I can't even fathom that. Because yeah. I'm six one. And I'm I walk around like 180 something, you know. I I'm like actively like taking care of myself, but like when I cut weight and I get down to like 165, that's like me doing the most. Like I'm talking cutting out carbs and sugar, like Hold on one you second. know. That's like, um, when you yeah. said I'm like active, it completely cut out. Oh yeah, I was saying like. When I'm walking around at like 185, like that's me still actively like. You know, working out, going to training and stuff, but just eating like whatever I want, whenever I want. When I'm cutting weight and I get down, like I take it so serious, mm -hmm. and I can only get down to like 165 when I'm looking like sucked out, yeah. dry. You know, so to see that these people have been like 200 pounds making 145, I'm like 155. I'm like, how is that even possible? No how is that even possible? No I mean, I guess people have like different bone structures and stuff, right? Yeah. Denser bones and stuff. But and they get used to it. They do that nasty weight cut, like 15 to 20 pounds in one night. Like, that's why. In one night. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, that's why they be up you know, on that scale looking crazy. Hey, that's why. Uh, what's his name? Uh, he just fought. He fought Kevin Holland. Uh, Hamza. Hamza. That's why Hamza was like, nah, I ain't making that weight. <laughs> We, we, we're definitely, like, in future it. episodes, we're going to get into Hamza because I don't care what nobody says. I'm still on the train. I'm still on the Hamza train. Oh, yeah. It is what 100%. it is. You know, I, I was just happy that, that we didn't get to see him do that to Nate Diaz. I did not want to see that at all. We already knew what it was going to be. Yeah. It was going to be a massive. We knew what it was going to be. That was like the best case scenario for, yeah. for Nate Diaz, I feel like. Yeah. Good on him. Yeah. Well. All right, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this episode. Is there anything that you want to um, end off with? Uh, Not really. I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm just looking forward to this fight this weekend, and I know everybody else is, and I can't wait. I can't wait. Yep. The fight we've been waiting for all year is coming up. Out in the cards. Yes. Watch all the fights. Let's go. Let's go, Charles. Get it done. And, uh, We'll Let's, go Let's go O'Malley. I want to see O'Malley. Hey, you know what the Snoop Dogg? O'Malley. 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 Let's go. <laughs> Shock the world. And we are out. All right.